Welcome back to this Inkscape basic tutorial series. Uh, we're going to go over the selection tool today. So let's open up Inkscape here. Probably one of the most used tools. So let's see what this can do. There's actually a lot of options that uh, a lot of people are unaware of. So over here on the left, you have your tool selection. And up here you have your variations of that tool. So we're on the selection tool. Let's go ahead and make an object here. Make a couple. Go back to the selection tool, see what it can do. So when you select an object, these arrows appear around the object. Most of you might be familiar with these already, uh, but if you grab these, arrows, they manipulate the objects in various ways. So this one pulls it down in proportion. This one stretches it out vertically. This one is stretches it horizontally. Um, you can, you know, manipulate objects pretty much almost any way you want to. Now, if you double, if you click it a second time, a different set of arrows shows up. Now these corner arrows will let you rotate your objects. Uh, the top arrow here will bend it. It'll skew your object. Side ones, same thing, skew the object. Just, you know, changes the complete shape of it. Um, <clears throat> inside your object, when you click it, there is this little center arrow or cross. If you move this, pull it down to a different section of your object, when you rotate your object, that becomes the axis of that object. So we move down the corner instead of rotating on, on the center, it rotates wherever you place this is, is going to be the fulcrum point. If we go to the text tool, just type some text out. Go to the selection tool. This will manipulate your text. Make it bigger, smaller, stretch it out, make it kind of fat. Make it crazy tiny. Total manipulation of the text. Same thing if you double click it, or well, click it a second time. It, you can rotate it. You can skew it. You get the idea. Now, on the variations of this tool, up here along the top, you have the first one, which is select all objects. So if you click that, it'll select all the objects that you have drawn on the page. Another way that you can select all the objects is just to grab a box and draw all the way around it. Uh, this second button is select all objects in all layers. I don't really use layers in Inkscape to do what I do. Um, it has different levels with inside each layer, and I just use the levels. But if you do use layers, that's that'll select everything in the layer. 
Um, if you have everything selected, this third tool here will deselect everything. Another way that you can deselect is just click off the page, which is probably the most used way. This, uh, let's just go ahead and select all these. This will, this next button, the fourth tool, will rotate your objects to the left 90 degrees. And if you have them all selected, it does this in a different way. But see that? This one is rotate 90 degrees to the right. That's the fifth tool. The sixth tool here is flip your object horizontally. So if you have something selected and you click flip it horizontally, it's going to mirror that object. The next tool is the flip vertically, which is going to basically turn it upside down. It's going to turn your object upside down. These next set of tools are what I was talking about. These are the different levels inside a singular layer. So I'm just going to get rid of this stuff and show you what I mean. So we'll just get some objects here. We'll draw some circles. Go to the selection tool. I'm just going to change the color of these so that they're different colors so that you can get a better grasp on what's going on here when we use these. So as you can see, these are all on different levels. I don't think there's I don't think there's a limit to how many levels you can have in a layer. But see, this red object is on top of the black object. The green one is on top of all of those others, blue, same, purple, same. So this is the top object in the level, or the top, yeah, this is the top of the level, and this is the bottom. So this first tool is uh, lower to the bottom, the first tool in this section. So if I, <clears throat> if I highlight this purple one, which is on top, and I click that, it's going to throw it to the bottom. So now it's going to be under the green, the red, and the black. It's going to be under them all. Now, the next tool in the section is lower one step. So I'm going to grab this blue one, highlight it, and we're going to lower it one step. So it didn't lower it all the way to the bottom. This one's on the bottom but it did lower at one level, which is the green. So it's still going to be on top of the red, and it's still going to be on top of the black. Is that making sense? So it just moves them up and down. The next one is raise up one step. So if we take this purple one, which is on the bottom, and we raise it up one step, it's going to be on top of the black, but below all of the others. Is that making sense to you? This is incredibly handy in what you know, the sign makers do, CNC people do. Uh, this last one in that set of tools is move to the top. So if we grab the bottom one and we click this button, it's going to move that to the top. So it's going to be on top of all of these others now. The next set of tools here is your X and your Y location. So we'll just get, I'll just get rid of those. We'll draw just a box here. Oh, yeah. So this next set, these numbers, your X and your Y location on your page. Now these are relative to this corner of your artboard. So if you go up here and you change these to zero, 
it's going to throw that object straight above that corner point. Now, if you if you change this one to zero, it's going to throw it right in the corner. So now your object is right in the corner of your storyboard. If you, you can also use that, if you have a object highlighted, you can use this to move it in really small increments. If you click it, it's going to move it very, very slowly. So if we come in here and we put another object on it, I'm just going to grab the zoom tool and we'll zoom in there so we can see what's going on. So if we are moving this object, see it's going to move it really, really slowly. I believe this is the smallest increments that you can move an object within Inkscape. So if you really got to dial something in perfectly, this is a good way to do it. Just click on those arrows. This is this is the x or this is the y axis, which is you know north and south, and this is the x axis, with, which is east and west. Uh, the right here is how wide your objects are, and how high your objects are. And this is relative in what measurement increment you're using, which is what this window's for. This is set to millimeters. Mine always goes to millimeters by default. I prefer mine in inches. So one of the first things I do when I get into Inkscape, I go to inches. Now, this object is 22.649 inches high by 24.018 inches wide. Now, uh, this, this tool here, this little lock, is the aspect ratio lock so if you click that and lock it this is you can no longer stretch it up and down like we could before it's going to keep the the parameters the same so if we had a so if you wanted to let's just erase this let's say we want this to be 12 inches wide by by 12 inches high, and we want to lock that aspect ratio so that it stays a perfect square. That's how. You, that's what we can do there. That keeps your aspect ratios the same. And that comes in handy if you're bringing in a, a a picture of a dog that you want to cut out or something like that. Um, these here, I I really don't use them a lot. Um, you can play with, play around with them a little bit if you if you like. I don't I don't necessarily use those all that often. Um, I guess that's about it for the selection tool. Now, if you didn't, one thing that you did, did notice is if I, when I had this object down here and I was trying to put this this object next to it, you see, I was trying to snap that. To the corners together that is incredibly annoying to me i usually i usually always turn that off um as soon as i notice it because it, it messes me up quite a bit and how to do that is up here in this right hand tool this very top right hand one enable snapping click that off and it'll and it'll, it'll no longer do that it'll, it'll let you put it wherever you want to put it that's about it for the selection tool. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I do appreciate the you watching this video, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.